So we're at the last stage now of this uh, charcoal portrait journey, and I'm just going to finish up just by putting a little bit of white chalk. And I've got a couple of tools here. I've got a piece of just a normal uh, piece of chalk, a white chalkboard piece of chalk, uh, which is very, very crumbly, similar to the big flat piece of charcoal that we started off with on blocking in our tones. Very, very good for getting nice areas of, of, of planes of white tone. And then I have a small piece of uh, a pencil, a chalk pencil, which is good for those little fine details, again, little tips, like the little wetness of the eyes, for example. Now, a very, very important S element of the chalk, uh, the chalk, is you have to use it sparingly. Less really is more with this. You don't want to put it on too liberally. The more white chalk you put on, you're actually going to kill that three-dimensional feel. You just want to put it on just to suggest the highlights. And remember, we are working on a tonal ground, okay? So this tonal stone-coloured paper, that acts as our mid-tone. If you completely obliterate and get rid of that mid-tone, again, you're going to flatten it. So you need some of that paper to still come through, which will give it that three-dimensional feel. Another important point to remember when you put on white chalk is you must put it on an area of the paper that is clean and free from charcoal. Okay, it needs to be. If you think about it, that has to be the case because if I wanted to put the highlights on the right hand side of his head, it shouldn't have any charcoal, should it? Because there's no tone on that right side of the face where it is in highlight. But for example, when you come into some of the detail, maybe around the eyes or into the neck, you might find there is some charcoal dust there. Now, you really have to make sure you clean that away. The reason being is that when you put white chalk on top of charcoal dust, it can look very, very muddy. You won't get that crisp white feel and consequently, when it's muddy, it will come very, very grey and it will flatten your image. You will kill that lovely three-dimensional illusion. So wherever you do put some white chalk, make sure you are putting it on an area that is clean and free from charcoal. So, like we did with our, uh, when we started off blocking in, we look for the darkest parts first, we block those in. We're going to do the opposite now, we're going to look for the very lightest parts first of the face. We're going to actually look for the very brightest highlights and pop those in. Now, for me, the brightest highlights is, of course, everything that's sort of hitting on this right-hand side of the face, on the very, very far-hand side. So I'm going to start off with that. Now, working very, very lightly, like we did before, I'm just going to start putting just a little bit in around those very, very white highlighted areas. Now, that part of this sort of part of the face where we left a bit of a gap, we almost sort of fill in that gap with that lovely white chalk. And I'm going to soften this fairly, very quickly, okay? I don't want it to stand out. I just want it to be very, very soft and very, very subtle. If you feel like you need to bring a little bit back in, that's fine. You just take your chalk and you just pop just a little bit more back in. There's a lovely kind of highlight ridge going down this nose, which is really important. That will really help that nose stick out and the nose is the most three-dimensional thing on all our faces and it's the hardest thing to really convey so really make sure that we don't miss out that three-dimensional feeling there going down so uh, this part of the lip is also very very highlighted um, and the upper lip there and then going down to his chin all this and already I'm really getting a great sense of uh, of sort of three dimension just by adding just this little bit of highlight of white chalk. Now I'm going to do his neck, and I've noticed his neck is a little bit muddy with some charcoal there, so I'm just going to try and clean it up as best I can. I want to try and get rid of most, if not all, of all that, and blow that away, and then I can put this on, and I know now that's not going to obstruct or get a little bit too muddy. Let's blend that in just a fraction more, put it a bit higher up to there. That's lovely. And, of course, we want to not forget the hair. So remember, I don't need to put too much detail on the hair, just a few sort of fun marks. I don't want people really staring at the hair too much. So just a few nice little uh, highlights there, just to suggest there's something. Just a little bit more on the forehead up here. Marvellous. Blend that in just a little bit. I don't want it too uh, too grainy. I want it to sort of really soften in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is with the smaller piece of uh, chalk, so with my chalk pencil, I'm now just going to sort of look at the eyes, and this is the really fun bit where you can just bring those eyes to life just by putting just a little bit of uh, highlight on those parts of the face where you see it. So I just put a little bit of white chalk just on the white of the eye. Don't, for goodness sake, paint, uh, draw the white of the eye and fill it in with white chalk. You'll notice tonal 
tonally speaking, the white of the eye is it's not that white at all. It's much, you know, it's kind of like a very, very uh, uh, sort of lighty grey colour. It's not white by any stretch. And I'm just going to put the highlight there. And the white of this eye is slightly lighter than the one on the left hand side. So just putting those lovely little dots into the right of the eye and just above the pupil, to the right of the pupil, that's just going to really give it a nice wet shine to it. A little bit of highlight under this eyelid here and on the inside of this eye there. Okay, really subtle, not too much. I'm just going to make sure that we get all the highlight down here and then I'm going to put it actually under here as well, all under there. And you can go over it a few times. It's best to work lighter and build up those layers than putting on too thickly and then struggling to uh, correct and move it under this nose here. And I'm going to put just a little bit under the mouth there. And now I'm just going to push it fairly hard and just get the nice wetness of that lip there, which is lovely. And then just a little bit more just under that there. And then back into my big chalk, I might just put just a nice few subtle lines just on the outside. There. Now, as for background, I'm going to keep, I'm not going to do anything in this background. I think it's kind of, it's a strong, crisp image enough. Don't feel like it needs anything just to sort of strengthen it, but it could, for example, it could have a, maybe a little bit of dark background on that side just to keep that face forward, but I'm fairly happy with how that looks. If I wanted to sort of really uh, exaggerate that, I could just put just a few little subtle marks there, just on the light right hand side which will just help bring that head just a little bit more forward like this so if I just put just a bit of a dark mark just around his eyelid for example coming down to here and up to there and his chin make sure you're taking just a good steps back as well lots of steps back at this stage get your distance from it imagine it up on the wall imagine a nice frame around it just to help you really visualise that finished, that finished feeling and that finished look. So remember, remember all those key features and that this this lovely structure that we work through. And it is a very, very good structure if you are looking to do and create a portrait that has a good likeness. So we started very, very broad. Remember that lovely simple structure where we did our lovely centre face axis, we made a head that's as life size as possible and just seeing it in very, very straight lines in very, very broad terms. And once we created that sort of skeleton structure, that lovely strong support where we put all those lovely tonal values on top. So using our big chunky charcoal and you can still see some of the marks, we slap that on. And once we really found that, we refined it a little bit more using the smaller bits of charcoal and pencil. We looked at where the eyes are, the most important part of the feature of your image and really refined that. So when the viewer looks at it, that is where you're taking their eyes. You really want them to look and to really be absorbed by that main focal point, that main focal feature. And when you get your chalk out, just be very, very uh, uh, gentle with it. Less is more just to pick up those really bright highlights that will really enhance that uh, three-dimensional feel and keep it very, very light. And we've still got some of those really lovely initial marks at the hair and the bottom. So as we move away from the eyes, it gets looser, it gets more expressive and hopefully just creates a really, really fun drawing. And then we get to uh, really finish it off by doing this. So that is my approach to how you create a charcoal portrait. <laughs>